The second target in our chemical bonding unit is analyze a chemical formula using superscripts. And in order to learn what a superscript is, we first have to talk about ions. And that's why we're going to be doing cation and anion notes. An ion is an atom that can become positively or negatively charged when an atom loses or gains valence electrons to form chemical bonds with other atoms. Atoms that become positively charged are called cations because cations are positive, while negatively charged ions are called anions, like anion, like anti. The superscript we're talking about is also known as an oxidation number, and that's a number that tells us how many electrons an atom will gain or lose, and that is the superscript seen by an element symbol. And it's kind of backwards because a positive oxidation number means that an atom is going to lose electrons. And a negative oxidation number means an atom is going to gain electrons. This is because electrons are negative. So if we gain more negative electrons, then the oxidation number will become negative. But if we lose something that's negative, then the atom is going to become more positive. This is going to take a lot of practice to get straight, but we'll get it, I promise. The reason we do these superscripts and these ions is because we have the octet rule. And the octet rule is also known as the rule of eight. Because oct, like octagon, eight. So atoms strive to have a full outer electron shell, which means they're going to have eight valence electrons, except helium, and we've already discussed why he's an exception. The reason they want eight valence electrons is because every atom wants to become stable, like the noble gas family. So there's a process to figure out the oxidation number and the symbol with the superscript of an atom. And we're gonna, I'm going to guide you through four. So if we have potassium and I look at my periodic table, I see that it's in group one, which means it's going to have one valence electron. If I were to draw the Lewis dot diagram, I'd write the symbol first, and then I have my one valence electron as a dot. In order to figure out whether it's going to become a cation or an anion, we have to see if it's going to be easier to either gain electrons to get to 8 or lose electrons to go to the level before it. So typically, if I only have one valence electron, it's easier to lose that one electron than to gain 7 more. So if I'm losing something that's negative, I'm becoming positive, so this is going to be a cation. So because it's a cation, it's positive, and I'm going to lose one electron, so my oxidation number is plus one. So my symbol with the superscript would be potassium symbol with a plus one in the upper right-hand corner. For nitrogen, it's in group 15, which means it's going to have five valence electrons. So when I draw my Lewis dot diagram, I'm going to say one, two, three, four, five valence electrons. Now because it has five, what we have to ask ourselves is, is it easier to lose five electrons or gain three? Well, it's easier to gain three to get to eight electrons. So nitrogen is going to want to gain three electrons, and because he's gaining negative electrons, he's going to become an anion. So because he's an anion, his oxidation number is going to be negative, and because I'm gaining three negative electrons, my oxidation number is negative three. So my symbol with my superscript is going to be N with a minus three in the upper right-hand corner. Fluorine, if I look at my periodic table, it's element number nine, but it's in group 17, which means it has seven valence electrons. So my Lewis dot diagram is going to have seven dots going around the element symbol. 
the question we're going to ask ourselves is, is it easier to lose seven electrons or gain one? Well, one is the lower number here, so it'll be easier just to gain one electron. So if I'm gaining something that's negative, I'm going to become an anion. Because I'm an anion, my oxidation number is going to be negative. Because I'm gaining one electron, it's going to be negative one. So my symbol with my superscript will be fluorine's element symbol with a negative one in the upper right-hand column. And last one for guided practice. So beryllium is in group number two, and it has two valence electrons. So my Lewis dot diagram is going to be the element symbol for beryllium with one, two valence electrons. The question we're going to ask ourselves is, is it easier to gain six more to get to eight or to lose these two? Well, two is the lower number, so it's going to be easier to lose two electrons. And because I'm losing something that's negative, I'm going to become a cation. Because cations are positive, my oxidation number is going to be positive. And because I'm losing two negative electrons, my oxidation number is going to be positive too. So my symbol with the superscript is going to be Be, beryllium's element symbol, with a plus two in the upper right hand corner. We're going to try to wean you off all of the steps. So for sodium, we know it's in group one. For chlorine, it's in group 17. For sulfur, it's in group 16. And for aluminum, it's in group 13. At any point during this part of the video, feel free to pause and try this on your own and then press play to see if you got the answer correct. So sodium, because it's in group one, has one valence electron which means if I write my element symbol, I'm only going to have one dot in my Lewis dot structure. For sodium, it's easier to lose one electron and become a cation than it is to gain seven. So my oxidation number is going to be positive because it's a cation, one, because I'm only dealing with one electron. So my symbol with my superscript will be Na plus one. Chlorine has seven valence electrons, so my Lewis dot structure will have the element symbol with seven valence electrons surrounding it. In this case, it's easier to gain one rather than to lose seven, so chlorine is an anion, which means my oxidation number is negative one. Anion because it's negative, one because of the amount of electrons. So Cl minus one is going to be my symbol with my superscript. Sulfur is in group 16, which means it has six valence electrons. So sulfur will have its symbol with six valence electrons surrounding it for my Lewis dot structure. In this case, it's easier to gain two more electrons rather than to lose six. So I'm going to gain two electrons, and if I'm gaining negatives, then I'm becoming an anion. So my oxidation number is going to be negative, and my oxidation number is two. So my symbol with my, with my superscript is sulfur symbol with minus two in the upper right hand corner because I want to gain two electrons in order to become stable. Aluminum is in group 13, so it has three valence electrons. My Lewis dot structure is the symbol with three dots surrounding it, three single electrons. And the question we have to ask ourselves is, is it easier to lose those three or gain five? Well, three is the lower number, so it's going to be easier to lose three electrons in bonding. So if we're going to lose electrons, we're a cation. So if, I have, if I'm a cation, my oxidation number is going to be positive, and then I have three, so my oxidation number is positive three, so I'm going to lose three electrons. So my symbol with my superscript is going to be Al with a plus three in the upper right-hand corner. Feel free to try these four, calcium, phosphorus, argon, and magnesium, on your own and pause the video, and then when you're done, press play, and then I, they'll reveal the answers. At this point, you should have paused the video and you've re-pressed play. So if I reveal the answers, you should pause the video and check. 
So calcium, because it has two valence electrons, will become a cation, and your superscript will look like this. Phosphorus is in group 15, so it has five valence electrons. It'll gain three electrons in bonding, so its oxidation number is negative three, so its superscript should look like this. Argon's in the noble gas family, so he's in group 18, and he has eight valence electrons. So he's actually already full. He's where he wants to be. So he's not going to do anything with his electrons because he's stable. This is why he has an oxidation number of zero. And this is how we would write his superscript. Or we would just write argon with no number in the top. Either way is correct. Magnesium and calcium are in the same family. So they're actually going to have the same superscript because they're each going to lose two electrons because they each have two valence electrons. In order to see if you actually understand what's going on in this video, please try to answer these three questions independently. Pause the video, write down your answers, press play again, and then check your answers. At this point, you should have re-pressed play for the last time, and now we're going to check our answers to check for understanding questions. The first question was, why do elements strive to have eight valence electrons? What is this rule called? Well, elements strive to have eight valence electrons to be stable, and this rule is called the octet rule. The second question is, would a member of the noble gas family be considered a cation, an ion, both, or neither? Explain your reasoning. Well, neither. Noble gas family's members are already stable, so they're, they're not going to be a cation or an anion. And the third question was, compare magnesium and sulfur. What do they have in common? What are their differences? And what causes these similarities and differences? Well, magnesium is plus two, while sulfur's oxidation number is minus two. So because they each deal with two electrons, that's where that two comes from, one wants to lose two electrons, so I highlighted it yellow because the oxidation symbol is positive, and the other wants to gain two electrons, which is sulfur. So you'll see that the pink go together as well. So the, it wants to gain two electrons, and we know that because the oxidation number is negative. 